This was an expensive mistake that I made in my fish room. This point might be a bit of a strange one, but hear me out. The setup would have been a little bit different with the plumbing, but it would still have been possible. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I thought we'd take a look at the top 10 things I wish I did a little bit differently with my fish room build, the things I regret, and the things I would change if I had to do the fish room over again. So I hope you find this video useful for your future fish room builds. Anyway, let's get into this week's video. Number one, insulate the room better. If I was to start over, I would insulate the walls first and then jib rock over them. The issue I have with this room is that it is very narrow and I need to have access to the plumbing. So I need space behind the tanks to do this. If I added the insulation and jib rock to the walls, the room would be even narrower. But even though that would have been the case, I still should have done it. Which brings me on to point two. Doing plumbing from the sides of the tanks instead of at the back. I later realised I could have plumbed the tanks on the sides. That would have meant I could have the tanks right up against the walls, have the maximum amount of space in the middle of the room and still be able to maintain the plumbing. The setup would have been a little bit different with the plumbing but it would still have been possible. The stands would have been about maybe a foot, a foot and a half apart and that would have allowed me access to the plumbing from the sides of the aquariums just by reaching to the side of each tank. Number three, this relates to insulation again and most of you probably wouldn't have this issue with your builds but putting in a lower ceiling. Because the fish room I have is so high and hot air rises, there's a large amount of air that needs to be heated for it to have an effect on the aquariums. So I should have put in a fake ceiling and insulate on top of that to decrease the volume of air in the fish room. Number four, have all the same size aquariums. This point might be a bit of a strange one, but hear me out. One of the hardest things I had to decide with building my fish room was deciding what size tanks to have built. In hindsight, I now think I should have just bought nine four-foot aquariums rather than 20 aquariums. Each row of tanks would have been the same height as you currently see on each row, but they would have all been four foot long by two foot wide. This one change would have had multiple benefits, such as less glass, so it possibly would have been cheaper for me to have the tanks built. This in turn would also possibly mean less weight per shelf due to less glass. However, the main benefit of having all large aquariums is that you can divide the tanks using dividers for whatever your current needs are. There would be issues with this design though. One of them is the plumbing. You would probably need to get the plumbing flow in from one end of the aquarium and out to the other end, but let water flow through all the dividers, though this plumbing design would be cheaper and simpler. However, you would not be able to isolate any of the fish that were in the same aquarium. This means if you needed to quarantine any fish, that you would have to quarantine the entire tank. The other issue, however, with this design is that it is harder to lift four foot aquariums rather than two foot aquariums. All that said, if I was to build the fish room again, I would have just purchased all four foot aquariums and relied on dividers to separate the fish. Number five, more large aquariums. I should have purchased additional large aquariums before I grow out. For the amount of fish I am breeding, I feel I need more larger creams just for fry grow out. At the moment, I only have two four foot by two foot aquariums, which are two foot deep, which I intended to breed large fish in, and I am, but I really do need some more larger aquariums just dedicated for fry grow out. Number six, I feel that I should have plumbed the new rack of aquariums. I just find it so easy to do water changes on the older rack just by changing out water from say one or two aquariums and then letting that water change water dilute through the rest of the system. Having a larger water volume does benefit the fish and I feel I should have done that on the newer rack. And while we're on the topic of plumbing, number seven, would I do the sump system again? Hell yes. It saves me so much time, so much effort. I know what I'm like when it comes to water changes. I'm very lazy and it just saves me so much time. And number eight, the unnecessary ball valves on the drain lines. This was an expensive mistake that I made in my fish room and the plumbing design. At the time when I was designing the fish room, I thought I was gonna need ball valves on all the drain lines to completely isolate every tank from the system if I needed to. And this was just an expensive mistake. From memory, each ball valve on the drain lines you see here cost almost $10. And at the time I felt I needed to purchase 12 of them. And I did purchase 12 of them, as you can see here. But I didn't realize that all I needed to do to isolate the tanks from the rest of the system was close the ball valve on the return line so water wasn't flowing into the tank and then 
lower the water level below the bulkhead so water wouldn't flow out of the tank. I didn't need ball valves on the drain lines at all. It was just a complete waste of time and an unnecessary expense. Number nine, installing drain lines in my fish room to make water changes easier. I just simply would have put drain lines in the fish room so I could just have shorter water change hoses to drain water out into the garden. Just makes it a whole lot easier than running to my tap out in the backyard, priming them 30 meters of hose and then taking that hose off the tap and then running it to the garden. If I had a drain line in the fish room, be able to do that really easy. I would divert the water obviously to the garden because putting the water change water down the drain is just such a complete waste of water. That said, it is something that I am planning to do in the near future to make my water change process a little bit easier. And lastly, number 10, I'd simply have a much larger fish room. I feel limited with the size of the room that I have. And at the moment I have 30 tanks, but I still feel that I could have a lot more uh, even with 30 tanks, I don't feel I'm able to breed all the different species that I want to breed. You do need to leave tanks for grow out, for fry grow out. So you can't use every single tank in your fish room to breed fish. You need to leave at least, I think, three to four tanks for fry grow out at different stages of fry. By the time you have the fourth tank full of fry, that first tank should have fry large enough to sell on to other hobbyists or local fish stores. So I do wish I had a larger fish room to have more tanks so I can breed more fish at the same time. So there you have it guys, the top 10 things I would change in my fish room if I was to do it all over again. I really hope you found those points informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.